Hello, Salaja here. In this instructional video, I'll be going over how to implement branching, or at least giving your computer the ability to branch. Up here we have the D flip flops that I showed in my last video. And I've put the output over there. So you've got that bit of redstone, that bit, and that bit there. Just three flip, uh, three D flip flops, and this is the clock. So you see it toggles along like that. But what if you want to branch to a specific line? Let's go back to the first one. Well, that's what I've implemented here. It's basically a method of controlling set and reset for each of the flip-flops. I've currently got it set to zero. If I pulse that, it flicks back to zero. I can set it to one. It'll go to one. I can set it to two and it'll go to the second and back to the first now if you're wondering how this works what I've got is this is a large uh, decoder it takes in a signal and it will produce an output at the bottom so let's set it at 2 the way it works this one actually only uses the first uh, three lines as a demonstration. The line which is off is actually the one that's selected, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. But what happens is that it's basically an AND gate, or lots of little AND gates. This line's on, so it turns, you can see there, so it turns that torch off and turns that repeater off, which allows this line to go dark. This one over here, one, uh, both of these are active because the input isn't exactly what it has to be. This one here, uh, zero, 0, the 0 line matches, however the the second line doesn't, which applies power and essentially switches this line off. So that's how the uh, decoder works. Now what this switch here does is it controls whether or not the overwrite signals are being sent. If it's off, you can see if I come over here, these two switches are in a on-off position, or you could say high-low, whereas these two are both low-high, low-high. And if you're wondering how those control the D flip flops, if I just come up here, it's hard to actually see, but the torches actually sit directly underneath this block and this one, which are the outputs of the uh, D flip flop. And by toggling these, you can essentially control uh, or immediately set or reset the D flip flop. I'll just make it daylight again. So you can see this is a simple method to be able to control which line it's at. I've actually gone off the edge there. Um, so if you ever want your if you've ever built a program counter and you want it to be able and you want to be able to immediately select a certain line you can input the line in binary and then you uh, toggle this and immediately you'll be reset to whatever you've selected there and then the program will just continue running and that's essentially how my computers handle branching they basically send overwrite sing signals to control the um, D flip flops. The way the signal gets interpreted in here, uh, if it's red, you know, it comes out. That torch is inverted up there. I'll actually turn this one off so it's easier to see. But you can see when the signal's in the off state, uh, that torch is turned off, that one's turned on, and the signal passes across there into this one. 
which results in that one being turned off, which the signals it sends up there turns this one off. This one is also off. However, this one is in the on state, which you can see here. All the torches are inverted, which applies the opposite signal there, uh, turning the D flip-flop into the on state, or forcing it into the on state. There is one downside to this. If the tor if even though they're edge triggered D flip flops, because we're accessing parts inside them, it can give funny results. If the clock is high and I try to set it to zero, two lines become active. Turning one off again, or turning the clock off, or setting it to low at least gets rid of the problem. But Usually you can just overcome this by cr controlling the internal timing of the CPU. And that just about concludes my demonstration on how to control which line you're reading from. Uh, actually, you may have noticed these large things in the background while I've been talking. They're, uh, they're the D flip-flops and program line selectors that I've been building for the actual computer that I'm building in parallel with this tutorial. Um, I haven't connected the uh, decoders up to it yet, so I hope to do that tonight. Alright, thanks for watching.